I get to introduce our, second, our next speaker. Through unwavering grit and determination, Nicole has literally fought her way through every obstacle to achieve a career of success and financial peace. Sorry. She has already excelled in her industry and is the managing partner of financial accounting services. She enjoys helping business owners create tax and financial strategies to improve business processes. Jeez, profitability. <laughs> She's an active participant in the community. She was awarded Temecula Citizen of the Year in 2012 and Volunteer of the Year in 2013. Along with her team, she leads Financial Peace University, a course designed to teach individuals and families to get out of debt and start saving. Financial guru Dave Ramsey has endorsed her as Temecula Valley's number one tax advisor, tax expert, sorry. Nicole's vision is to help provide hope and inspire change so that others learn to live modestly, leave a legacy, and really help change the world. I'd love to introduce you to my beautiful friend, Nicole Albrecht. Tissue, just in case. I was 16 and pregnant, scared, confused, a disappointment to my family. By 17, I had graduated early and was kicked out of my home, my fault. I was now held hostage to the label of single mom, a baby raising a baby. Three years later, I had graduated. I was out on my own and in between apartments, age 20. I had several jobs just to make ends meet, pizza parlor, gas station, and cage fighter. Yep, you heard right. All while going to San Marcos and taking 21 units to obtain my degree. I barely slept and never saw my son. I was in survival mode. It was an early morning, May 2001, raining outside. As I walked out to my car, I noticed shattered glass was everywhere. My son's car seat was soaking wet. See, we lived in a shady neighborhood, and the car had been broken into four times that year. Now, purse missing, along with the last few bucks I had to my name. I picked up my son and walked back into our crappy little apartment and slumped on the floor. I had no money for gas, no money for food, and no idea how we were going to survive. Everything seemed hopeless. Now that I've lightened the mood, I'd like to take a moment and share a different story, one about taking chances. Two months before that day, I decided I could no longer endure the endless cycle of shit storms, and I needed to find a way out. First off, I needed a better job. I reviewed my skills. I could make one hell of a pizza. I could scrape gum off the gas station concrete, and oh yeah, I could kick some ass. This was quite a resume. But I did have one thing. I had one thing on my side. I had to survive. I was now responsible for another life. One who meant more to me than anything I'd ever loved. I had to survive for him. He didn't ask to be born into this poverty-stricken life. I had to have guts, and I had to figure out a way. I was in the fight circuit with UFC at the time, so I was hanging out with some people that had money and were sponsoring the events. I remember very clearly that night at a, at a fight, walking through the crowd. I had a black eye and my heart was pounding through my chest. See, I could get in a cage and fight some other woman, but I was terrified to ask someone for a job. I walked up to one of my sponsors and took a breath and asked if she knew anyone that was hiring. She said she'd see what she could do, and I thanked her. But as I walked away, I could hear a whisper under her breath that I was white trash and probably no one would hire me. That night, I went home, cried myself to sleep, ashamed and overwhelmed. But I kept telling myself, keep asking, someone will say yes. Someone once said, if opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. Thank you, honey. Well, I say, sometimes knocking on the door isn't enough. Sometimes we gotta kick them in. We don't all have equal opportunities, but we all have the opportunity to be better than we were yesterday. 
There isn't anything special about me. I was just brave enough to look for the open doors. This is hard to do when you're buried with self-doubt, insecurities, and fear, when you're in survival mode. But I knew if I had guts, if I kept asking, I would find a way. One day I got an interview for a secretary job at a local tax firm. I was beyond nervous and terrified, but I went for it. I remember it wasn't great timing for me. I had a big fight coming up that same week, so I had my traditional dreadlock hair, black eye from sparring the night before, and a tongue ring. And that was cool back in the 90s. I got my new suit from Salvation Army, and my makeup was doing a pretty good job of hiding the black eye. I went in to meet my new potential boss, Fred Karma. Karma, I swear you can't make this shit up. Karma was really his last name. <laughs> What I remembered most about that day was that Fred was compassionate and caring. He understood that I needed flexibility and the struggle I had being a single mom. See, Fred too came from humble beginnings and he knew what it was like to hustle to put food on the table for his young family. In fact, years earlier, we found out that we had worked for the same pizza parlor. Fred took a risk on me. I was hired the same day on the spot, not sure why. And I finally had a fighting chance. Back to that rainy day two months later with the broken car window and the missing purse slumped on the ground of my apartment, I made the one phone call to my new boss, Fred Karma. Fred could sense the hopelessness in my voice. He didn't pass judgment, he was compassionate. Fred didn't have a lot of money at the time, but he paid for my window to be fixed and took me under his wing. Over the next year, he taught me everything there was to know about our business, and I was very eager to learn. Fred's willingness to take time and mentor me was life-changing. And I don't say it enough, but Fred really is one of the reasons why I am who I am today. Thank you, Fred. I now think back to that 20-year-old who was scared, confused, and exhausted. And I am proud of who she was and her strength and courage to fight on. I would tell her that it would be tough and exhausting and he'd feel like you'd want to give up many days, but that someday, that one day it would be all worth it. That her beautiful, bratty, now 20-year-old son would grow out of his behavior problems, graduate college, and find his path that she would restore her relationship with her parents and they'd be there cheering for her when she won citizen of the year. And that she wouldn't live with the burden of debt or fear of missing a meal ever again. In fact, she would own her own dream home, have a retirement plan funded and be debt free. That she would co-own three companies with that one man who gave her a fighting chance, Fred Karma, and together they would lead a rock star team of 12 to do great things. I would tell her to keep dreaming and don't give up, and that one day she would be blessed enough to stand up in front of her community and share her story and help inspire others to fight the tough fight. Here in this room, we have community leaders and difference makers. Look how incredibly fortunate we are to be sitting in this beautiful resort in sunny California on a work day, some of us sipping wine. Let's take a moment just to reflect. This, my friends, this is success. So that is my story, and here is my ask. I ask that you give. You give in some way like Fred gave. Some of us can give time, some money and resources, and some a trusted person to lean on. When you see a single mom, love on them. Their journey is long and hard, and they are warriors. Given the right chances, they can move mountains. If we have empathy on how hard life can be, we can help them succeed, to rise above their challenges, to raise their children, to have a better life. My friends, we have success. Now I ask you to dedicate to giving back. I can promise you this. If you're willing to help others, they will be grateful and they will never forget. Let's help them have a fighting chance. Thank you.